Chapter 5 introduces us to gas laws, and gases, of course, being a physical property, are different from other physical properties in a number of ways. So it's important to take a look here at the characteristics of gas laws before you proceed, particularly paying close interest to volume and to uh, temperature changes, and of course the variation in shape, something that um, altogether may not be uh, comparable to liquids or solids. And this variation in the volume that is dependent upon pressure and temperature is going to really um, be essential in understanding gas laws because they're the three, three of the four properties we'll be discussing. Um, the other being the number of moles of a gas. So characteristics of gases are a good place to start because they will help us in the understanding of gas laws, which essentially are statements that relate these four properties to one another and put them in terms of a mathematical equation. So since we will be solving equations, it's important to take a look at units. And of course, uh, units will be important in terms of the pressure and temperature because they have different units that we can use. Um, as far as the number of moles and the volume, we'll discuss those at a later time. But pressure is going to be uh, determined or given in three different units. The ATM unit, which is basically our SI unit, the atmospheric pressure. Other uh, units include millimeters of mercury, which is very common because that is how a barometer uh, is used to measure pressure units, very similar to how a thermometer would work, and also tors, which are equivalent to millimeters of mercury. They essentially are the same thing, tor just being uh, a, an abbreviation for Torricelli, an Italian scientist um, to whom credit is given for his work in um, uh, pressure uh, units. So millimeters of mercury and tors are the same. Conversion factors, of course, that are important because we have to be able to convert back and forth between atmospheric pressure and uh, millimeters of mercury or tors. And so every one ATM here is equivalent to 660 millimeters of mercury and thereby 760 tors since millimeters of mercury and tors are the same thing. As far as temperature is concerned, of course, we know that we have different temperature scales as we learned at the beginning of the course. Temperature most likely is going to be given to you in terms of either degrees Celsius or degrees Kelvin. It's very important that you always use degrees Kelvin, however. So if you're given Celsius, make sure you convert to Kelvin before proceeding. So, so far we've got a few units to keep track of, and that would be for pressure and for temperature. Now moles are always uh, given to you in units of moles. And volume can be given to you, as we discussed, again at the beginning of the course in different units, namely milliliters or liters, but most often you're going to see volume in liter units here in the gas laws. So what is a gas law? It's a mathematical statement or equation that relates two or more of these uh, gas properties to one another. And so we have several gas laws that we'll be discussing and each one of them will re relate to or more of these properties. If these properties are not being discussed, we will assume that they are being held constant. So, the first gas law will be Boyle's Law and basically what you will be looking at throughout these notes is a relationship um, between the variables. So the relationship will be given to you, meaning which variables or characteristics are we looking at, in this case pressure and volume, and what is their relationship? They are inversely proportional, which means that as one increases, the other decreases, and then we move on to look at what the equation is that matches our gas law. And in this case, for Boyle's Law, it's P1V1 equals P2V2. So simply, you will look at problems, list the given units or variables, ensure that the units are in the correct form, meaning do they all match, and plug in and solve. So quite simple and very, very straightforward in this chapter. We move on with Charles' Law, and Charles' Law will give another relationship, another equation, and so forth, Gay-Lussac. And the combined gas law, which combines Boyle's, Charles, and Gay-Lussac, Avogadro, 
And then, of course, we get to the universal gas law, which is a very, very useful gas law because it is the one that combines all four properties into one, all four. And because it is a, a universal gas law, that means all of the units should be in universal or standard SI units. That means you should have your pressure, your volume, your number of moles, and your temperature all in SI units. The other uh, name for this gas law is called the ideal gas law because it's supposed to describe the behavior of an ideal gas. So how does it de describe the behavior of an ideal gas? Well, it uses uh, basically like a corrector and a factor that helps us to put all of these um, variables into usable terms, and that is called the ideal gas law constant, R. R's value is always a standard value of 0.0. 8 to 1 liters atmospheres per mole degree Kelvin. Notice the units of R here are all in SI units, which means those are the units that you should be using every time you use the ideal gas law. Volume should be in liters. The pressure should be in atmospheres. N or moles should be in mole units, and temperature should be in Kelvin. So, so far, we really hadn't made any distinction as to um, what unit should be used besides temperature. Temperature should always be in Kelvin, but in terms of all the other units, especially volume, um, which is mils or liters, or pressure units, which be, can be atmospheres, millimeters of mercury, or tors, now we're being very, very specific for just atmospheric units. And here is the ideal gas law, used very, very commonly. Uh, the ideal gas law is also not only helpful because it takes into consideration all four gas properties, but it also helps us to determine the density of a gas because gases have a very low density, and they also help us to determine the molecular mass of a particular gas. And they do so by simply taking this equation, the PV is equal to nRT, and making some derivations and making this new equation, where density is equal to pressure times molecular mass divided by R times temperature. Again, we're using R here, and where you have R, everything must be in SI units only. That is the key. Every time you see R, you should be using only SI units. And then we move on to even more gas laws, which would in turn be Dalton's law of partial pressures. And Dalton's law of partial pressures is simply a gas law that differs from the others simply that it doesn't take into consideration two or more properties and give a relationship to them but rather it just makes a statement that the sum of the individual pressures of a component uh, of components in a mixture of a gas will equal the total pressure so basically the sum of all the parts equals the whole and if you have a mixture of gases which we have not alluded to mixtures thus far we've we've assumed that it's been one regular gas um, or one gas alone, but what we've been alluding to is uh, that there's only one gas. Well, what if there's a mixture of gases, like the atmosphere that we're breathing right now? Gases, when in a mixture, are made of different component gases, and each one of them, therefore, exerts a pressure. So part of the total pressure, or the partial pressure of each gas, when added together, gives you the total. So in short, the pressure of gas one, and the second gas, and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth component gas will give you the total pressure of the gas. And that is not only based on the percentage composition, but also by the mole fraction of that particular gas. And before we wrap up, one particular um, item of note, in addition to looking at new pressures and temperatures that are new topics introduced into this particular chapter, um, aside from the gas laws, is looking at what we call STP. And I wanted to save this till the very end to discuss because it's very important that you understand that it, it stands for standard temperature and pressure. And all that simply means is that if you see the term STP, that should tell you that that means we have zero degrees Celsius of temperature, which is the equivalent of 273 Kelvin, and a pressure of one atmosphere. Therefore, you may not be given an actual pressure or temperature. But if a question or a problem states STP, you should know what that means. What that stands for is 273 Kelvin or 0 Celsius in temperature and 1 atmosphere. Those are what are considered standard units and values for temperature and pressure. 
And as we move on in this chapter, we will explore a few more topics depending on uh, the type of course that you're in. Uh, there is a problem set that follows these notes and solutions, and it's highly recommended that you practice them. Again, following the uh, procedure of writing down all the given information, looking at the variables that you are given, and then trying to match the known variables and the unknowns to a particular gas law equation. Finally, plugging in and solving, making sure all units cancel out. So be very methodical, and the gas laws should be a very straightforward and simple chapter.